You are what you eat. But did you know that the choices of the food you buy and eat take on more significance as we age? Tonight on The Best Times, we'll ask you, what's on your plate? And we'll close out the show with a performance by Jeremy Schrader. Funding for The Best Times is provided by The Plow Foundation, striving to do the greatest good by helping the greatest number of people since 1964. Additional funding is provided by the members of WKNO. Thank you. Hello, I'm Chris Hardaway. Welcome to this edition of The Best Times, a series that looks at life after 50. We've all heard the phrase, you are what you eat, and our mothers told us how important it was to clean our plates. But our bodies change as we age. Our metabolism slows, our digestive system changes, and we may develop chronic health conditions. The latest scientific studies highlight the link between eating well and aging well. For example, a recent study showed that healthy seniors who had daily helpings of leafy green vegetables, such as spinach, kale, and collard greens, had a slower rate of cognitive decline compared to those who tended to eat little or no greens. So, healthy eating can lead to a longer life. Maybe it's time to ask the question, what's on your plate? Since January of this year, the Arlington Senior Center has been holding regular cooking classes for its members. It's an opportunity for them to learn about the concepts of healthy eating, and it gives them hands-on experience in creating healthy meals. We have a great lunch and learn program that stresses the importance of eating and how important adding more fruits and vegetables is to, to your diet not only for our body, but for our mind. But what we were lacking was a place for our community to apply what they have learned. And not only apply it, but do it in a social engaging format. And that's where we developed the cooking classes and hopefully it'll turn into more of a small group supper club format. Today, the group is learning about the ways that cauliflower can be incorporated into their diet as a healthy alternative, such as the crust for a pizza. We have seen more and more how much what we eat affects our, how our brain works, our memory, and things like that, as well as our joints and how able we are to move. So far, the reaction to the cooking classes has been very positive. Healthy eating can actually taste good while being good for you. They have tried new things that they would not have tried before, and you'll get about 75% are like, yeah, this is great. We had one time I made them cupcakes and it didn't tell them it was vegan cupcakes with flaxseed and so forth. And they actually loved it. It tastes just like a chocolate cupcake. So it's been interesting and fun, definitely. On a Wednesday morning at the South Memphis Farmer's Market, a cooking class is learning the finer points of making spaghetti and meatballs. This class is part of a 10-week curriculum called the Aging Mastery Program, which covers everything from exercise to financial fitness to medication management. All of the topics are life skills that every one of the participants has dealt with and experienced. But the classes make the seniors focus on the topics in a new light. In essence, the program is to assist with what they're already doing to enable them to do it a little better and longer. No doubt, some of the participants in this class have been cooking spaghetti and meatballs all their lives. But the Aging Mastery instructor is teaching these students to make this meal from scratch using healthy ingredients. Why buy the expensive pre-made pasta sauce when you can make your own and make it taste better? Mastering the life skills we've already learned and applying them to life in our 60s, 70s and beyond is a goal that will enable more and more older citizens to age in place. On a Tuesday morning at Church Health in Crosstown Concourse, 
a group of medical professionals and students are exploring the expanding field of culinary medicine. Well, what we're trying to do is to teach people how to eat healthier. Um, healthy grocery store strategies, um, simple recipes they can go home and make, uh, everything at a local grocery store, um, teaching folks that you don't have to go to a fancy store to cook delicious healthy meals at home. Um, one thing we always try to incorporate in our classes is proper portion sizes. So I think a lot of people are doing better choosing healthier foods at the store, but the portion's still a little off. So that's a big component of our class too. At the end of every session, the class plates up the proper portion size and they go around and show it to, um, to the group. These culinary medicine classes equip health professionals with cooking and nutrition basics that can then be passed on to their patients. All of our recipes are based on the Mediterranean diet, um, getting in whole grains, plenty of fruits, plenty of vegetables, lean meats, lean proteins, uh, olive oils, nut seeds, healthy fats, uh, fruits and vegetables, um, and whole grains when you can. And, um, you know, dairy products can fit as well, um, but we say two to three servings of dairy a day. Even though these classes teach nutritional guidelines that can benefit people of any age, they take on increased importance as we get older. As we get older, um, our bodies tend to slow down a bit and uh, we don't need as many calories um, as we did maybe when we were 15 to 20. So um, it's very important, extra important for us to get those good calories um, and make the most of our calories. Uh, things, a lot of superfoods out there, broccoli, sweet potatoes, uh, um, strawberries, things like that, spinach, and those are all things we can incorporate into um, our diets as we age. I've invited three guests from Church Health to discuss the healthy foods that should be on our plates as we age. Sharon Moore is the Manager of Wellness Education and Nutrition. Melissa Peterson is the Kitchen Operations Manager. And you've met Carolyn Nichols, the Nutrition Education Coordinator. We've all been told all of our lives that, that healthy eating, good nutrition, it's important. But does healthy eating and good nutrition take on more importance as we age? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, why? And the reason being is that as we age, we tend to be less active. And if we're less active, then we need fewer, nutri fewer calories. Uh, or you could have health conditions that you're taking medication for that can affect your taste or your desire to eat, your appetite. As you get older, you may have dental issues that affect the way you chew your food. So there's lots of factors that could go in to the amount that you eat. In that respect, does our digestive system change as we age? That does And does that, does that affect what we eat or what we want to eat? Well, it may affect the way you eat uh, because just like our muscles tend to lose elasticity as we age, that happens with our organs as well. And our digestive organs, what pushes the food through our digestive system is a series of muscle movements. So if those are not as strong as they used to be, then the food doesn't pass through as effectively as it used to. So you may want to uh, choose foods that are higher in fiber in order to assist that process. When I sit down to eat and I look down at my plate, what does a healthy plate of food look like? Well, um, you wanna make sure you uh, have all the nutrients represented um, in a, on a perfect plate. Um, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, dairy, um, small amounts of protein. Um, at our, uh, in our classes at Church Health, what we do is focus on the Mediterranean diet and um, half of our plate should be full of fruits and vegetables. Um, a quarter of it should be protein and a quarter of it should be whole grains, something like uh, brown rice, um, uh, whole wheat bread, and hopefully uh, on a perfect plate, something on the side, which is dairy, uh, milk, if you're not a big milk person, maybe some yogurt, a little bit of cheese, something like that, and plenty of water. Are there specific nutrients that older eaters <laughs> should be looking to put into their diet? Kind of depends on the person mm -hmm. and you know what they what their doctor has prescribed or what their needs are because everybody ages differently at different rates and so paying attention to it and getting those nutrients out of your food it, that's your fuel for the day um, that's the place that you get it so you got to pay attention to it. it but typically, an older person needs to be very conscious of the calcium, vitamin D, and B12. Those are the three 
biggest ones for someone aging. Does our own health, meaning if we may have chronic diseases or illnesses, uh, what role does food play in dealing with that? It, I, I mean, I, I personally think it's everything in that you're putting, food is one of the most voluminous things that you put into your body. And that's the building blocks for everything, whether it's treating a, a chronic condition or just keeping you energized and alert and active. Um, food is what's gonna do that. So if you're giving it good stuff, it can do good things. Um, if you give it not great stuff, it's not gonna. Well, let's talk about the good stuff. What is the good stuff? What's the stuff we should eat? What's the stuff we should avoid? We want to get away from saying there's good foods and bad foods. Um, so we don't have we don't want to have a negative association with a certain type of food. And those sometimes foods would be things like cake, brownies, um, M and M's, like, uh, jelly eat. beans, um, soda, things like that would be every now and then foods. And foods, they're always foods. Daily foods would be. A lot of whole grains, uh, spinach, bananas, apples, um, milk, plenty of water, um, lean proteins, uh, things like chicken breasts, beans, lentils, uh, healthy fats, um, nuts, seeds, avocados, olive oil, um, things like that. Those are all your good foods to eat uh, more abundantly and, and small, in, you know, reasonable amounts. And in, um, in the every now and then foods save on special occasions. Well, let's talk about portion size because mm -hmm. you talk about reasonable amount. What's a mm -hmm. reasonable? How do you um, know the portion size that you need to eat? The um, most helpful tool is can it fit in my hand? You know, if if something if, if the portion can fit in my hand, that's probably the right portion size. For example, one scoop of ice cream, one piece of pizza, one small scoop of lasagna. Is this a myth? Is it a myth that eating healthy costs more? Meaning I have to go out and buy organic this and organic that. Yes, that's a myth. Um, it is? Yes, I think you can still eat a perfectly healthy, balanced diet and not have it cost a whole lot of money. In our classes at Church Health, what we do, we get all of our groceries at the regular grocery store. Um, we don't go to a fancy, um, you know, all organic store. We go to a very uh, a grocery store that's accessible to to everybody. And another good rule of thumb to just kind of make it simple for people is when you go to the grocery store, shop from the periphery of the store. If you shop from the periphery for the majority of your groceries, you're going to be getting the most nutrient dense foods. The foods that are on the <laughs> aisles in between, there's some reason why they can sit on that shelf for as long mm -hmm. as they can and the reason is because they have all these additives and preservatives. So if you buy less from those rows and more from the periphery, you're going to be getting most of the nutrient And the labels food. get really easy on the fruits mm. and vegetables because there aren't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to make it real yeah. simple? That, that's in the simple. So that's hard. just a good rule of thumb. When we're cooking, and let's say we have a particular condition, high blood pressure for example, let's say we're salt sensitive, what do I use to substitute for salt? Well, there's um, there's a lot of good herbs and seasonings out there, um, a whole line of salt-free seasonings you can use. Um, in our cooking classes, we use a lot of onions and garlic, um, a lot of peppers if you like spicy things. Um, a lot of times you can add peppers, uh, um, red pepper flakes, and sometimes when you get that heat going on, you miss that salt component. Um, if you're not a big you know, spicy fan, a lot of people don't like spicy foods. So you could do lemon juice, lime juice, uh, lime zest, lemon zest, um, to add a little acid to the food. Sometimes that helps, um, you know, with that level, that we kind of get that flavor. Um, salt is really hard to mimic the flavor of it, uh, unfortunately, but um, you can add things like vinegars, um, lemon juice. Uh, we use a lot of onions and garlic, and that really helps. Onion powder, garlic powder, um, salt-free seasonings things like that, that'll help. Are there good fats and bad fats? Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, a lot of the good fats we use are things like um, almonds, uh, walnuts, those are two really good healthy fats. We use a lot of avocados in class. Those are a lot of healthy fats and olive oil. We've talked about the Mediterranean diet and you've told me a little bit about that, but I know as we grow up we all have our comfort foods. And sometimes they may not be the healthiest choice for us. So. How can you incorporate some of these comfort foods into a healthy diet? A little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's making something like cake or a dessert a treat, something special, not an everyday occasion, or a little bit of something 
really good, even though if it, it's not terribly great for you. A little bit of a great cheese. Um, a little bit of, of sugar in the right place. Um, those small amounts to give you that, that good taste of something and, and make it a reward, not an everyday thing that kind of numbs you to it. So in addition to controlling portion size of your regular meal, control how often you yeah. eat that little Moderation special. Moderation and everything. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Um, we talked a lot about the food. What about beverages? What should we drink? Water. Water. Water? Yeah. Lots water. of water. Mm -hmm. Anything more interesting than water? <laughs> well, in the Mediterranean diet, a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Red oh, wine okay. in particular. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, some of my viewers will be interested in drinking <laughs> that. <laughs> and if you need to make your water, and if you don't just like plain water, um, and, you know, some people don't, do what you have to do to get to get it in. Some people like to squeeze lemon in or lime, or some people like to put cucumbers and fresh mint you know, just to make it seem more interesting. So uh, some people like it really cold, so put a lot of ice in it. Just do what you have to do to get that water in, as long as you're not adding a whole lot of sugar and things to it. Well, finally, tell me, give me your best advice about eating healthy as we age. I would say eat according to the Mediterranean principles. Um, you, you don't have to eat Mediterranean food, <laughs> but the, the Mediterranean way just, it has, there's so much research behind it. I mean, it's got over 30 years of evidence-based research that shows that it really does either prevent or help manage disease from any age group. And um, it just, all of those nutrient-dense foods we just discussed, the water, uh, exercise, it, it's got every, all of the healthy fats. All of those things are incorporated into uh, that way of eating, and it's, it's not hard to do. It's easy. It, you can eat like that for a lifetime, and that would be my recommendation. All right. Well, thank you all for telling me what to put on my plate mm -hmm. <laughs> next time I sit down to eat. Thanks for being on The Best yeah, Times. Thanks yes, for us. thank you. Mm -hmm. If you want more information about which healthy foods should be on your plate, go to these informative websites. All season long, we've been bringing you music from the performers of Creative Aging, a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing the arts to our older population. Tonight, we close out the show with Jeremy Schrader. Enjoy the music. We're going to do one of those uh, original songs we spoke of. This one's about a lovely little street down in New Orleans. You can see all kinds of great music, great food down there. This one's called Frenchman Street. I want to, I want to, to, You don't have to be French on Frenchman Street. They're all just kids, but the kids are all real. Spotted cats and scruffy dogs meet. It's not heaven, but it's close. I got 20 minutes left, but a lifetime to live. I may be late, but you'll have to forgive. I don't know why I can't seem to leave. There must be something in the air. Well, in New Orleans, you'll have the sweetest dreams. Just down the road, much closer than it seemed. Come on and meet me at DBA. Well, I promise we won't be too late. Cause you don't have to speak French down on Frenchman Street. A line or two of Spanish sounds pretty sweet. So take a chance, just ask for a dance. You just might get a little more.
Down the road and much closer than it seems. Come on and meet me at DBA. Well, I promise we won't be too late. You don't have to speak French down on Frenchman Street, but a line or two of Spanish sounds pretty sweet. So take a chance, just ask for a dance. You just might get a little more. Down by the riverside, I'm gonna lay down my burden. Down by the riverside, I won't study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Won't study war no more. I'm gonna study that war no more, no more. I won't study that war no more. Won't study that war no more. I won't study that war no more. Want more information about life after 50? Go online to watch more shows and find more resources. And send us your feedback and story ideas to besttimes at wkno.org. That's all for this edition of The Best Times. Please join us next week for more stories about life after 50. Until then, I'm Chris Hardaway. Thanks for watching. Good night.
Funding for the best times is provided by The Plow Foundation, striving to do the greatest good by helping the greatest number of people since 1964. Additional funding is provided by the members of WKNO. Thank you.